Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Solid State Physics in a Nutshell, brought to you by the Colorado School of Mines. I'm Eric. And I'm Nicole. Alright, so last time we played with Bloch's Theorem in one dimension. Today our goal is to extend this to 2D and give you some basic vocabulary for labeling points within the Briolan zone. Okay, Nicole, what assumptions do you want to make? So it's safe to say we're going to keep using the free electron model, so we can keep that parabolic dispersion. I'd also like to invoke a periodic lattice, like we did with Bloch, but let's make the potential from our atoms very small so we have no band gaps. So what type of lattice do you want to use? Well, a square lattice is nice and symmetric, and it's easy to draw, so let's do that one. Okay, that sounds good. As a starting point, just recall the 1D dispersion and the periodic zone scheme. We'll find parabolas with origins at plus and minus 1G that also extend into the first Brehelon zone. And we also find these parabolas at plus and minus 2G1, and so on and so on. Now in 2D, the original parabola looks like this, since it extends out into Kx and Ky. What do we see for the parabolas with origins at plus and minus 1g1? So it's going to be the same behavior as in the 1D case, and we can draw our dispersion along the Kx like so. Now suppose I turn on the parabola with an origin at 1g2. What happens as it expands out? Eventually it's going to cross the Kx plane, yeah? Yeah, it does, and it creates this cross-section. What about the parabola at minus 1g2? Well, it should be the same thing, yeah? So is this parabola flatter or sharper than the 1d parabola at the origin? Actually, one of the questions to ponder asks this question, but we can front-load this and say that it has the same curvature as the origin. Seems like we could keep adding bands at higher and higher energies by just including parabolas that are farther away. Totally, but for the sake of clarity today, we're just going to call it good with the following parabolas along Kx. But you're just showing the energies along Kx. We're ignoring the rest of the dispersion. Yeah, that's a good point. So, trying to draw multiple intersecting parabolas is going to be crazy hard. So let's try using Mathematica and the plot 3D function instead. Ugh, technically this has the dispersion, but it's kind of horrible. Is there a better way to do this, or at least something simpler? There is, but we're going to need to introduce some vocabulary first in labeling our first Briolan zone. For a square lattice, we're going to have a square Briolan zone with our axis of kx and ky as so. Gamma is our origin, at kx ky equals zero, x is at the right edge, and m is at the corner. Oh, so y would be at the top edge, yeah? Not quite. For a square, x and y are the same point due to symmetry, so we don't bother plotting it as a separate point. But what about other Briwan zone shapes? The y would be important then, right? Absolutely. So now we have the tools to manipulate plot cross sections from gamma to x to m and then back to gamma. And we're going to call these spaghetti diagrams. These paths should capture all electronic properties, which we'll explore deeper in later videos. Let's start by going from gamma to x. Well, that's easy, because we've already done that one. The original 1D parabola is this line here, and this line is the parabola shifted by 1G1, and the one shifted by 1G2 is on top. So what about going from x to m? Well, this line should end at a higher value, because the distance from the origin gets bigger. You got it. So going back to gamma, then, the two better meet at the same value, so we see something like this. What about the other two parabolas? I think this is actually a really good homework problem, so we're going to stop with this example for now. And if you're ever in doubt, trace the path in the first Briolan zone and try to get an estimation of whether the distance from your parabola's origin increases or decreases. And with that, we've wrapped up band structure diagrams. As a question to ponder, see if you can prove mathematically why the parabola shifted by 1g2 is equivalent to the parabola at the origin. And by equivalent, you mean it has the same curvature, although it's at a higher energy. Yeah. Okay. And then how about another one? So within this vanishing periodic potential limit, there's only so many unique band structures. How many are there in 2D? How about 3D? Pick one and sketch it for the first few adjacent parabolas. And what real materials do you think will have band structures that are similar to the ones calculated from the vanishing potential? And finally, how do you decide what path to trace along the Brayland zone to build a spaghetti diagram? 
So thanks for watching today's solid state physics in a nutshell. Next time we'll look back at dispersion relationships and investigate the electrical properties for filled and partially filled bands. See you then!